Hi, uh, this is part two of the DMX uh, 512 lighting introduction to. Uh, what we're going to take a look at is the software and hardware that's involved in uh, DMX lighting. Uh, first thing we're going to talk about universes, addresses, and controllers. So a DMX 512 controller can communicate with 512 addresses. Sometimes they're called channels. One of the things you're going to find is that there's a, a bit of confusion between using the word channel. Channel can be addresses. It can be used faders, um, dimmers, and that. There's no standard on that wording, and it has multiple meetings. We'll try to uh, separate it, too, so it's not as, so con as confusing. A controller controls a fixture on a universe. A uh, universe can communicate with 512 addresses, and a controller can control multiple universes if you want. Right? Uh, each fixture, which is a light, can use multiple addresses. Each address has a special function. So if we have an example of an RGBW light fixture, and it uses a separate address for controlling the brightness of each color, and it needs four channels. Uh, controllers, uh, you can get software and hardware. This is an example of a uh, software one. It's a free one called Freestyler DMX. Uh, what you need, you'd run this on a PC or on a laptop, and you need a USB to DMX adapter. There's an example there. They're quite inexpensive. They're about 20 bucks to, you know, and up. And that um, Freestyler is one of the first ones I used. It's a, it's very different from other controllers in their concept of it. Um, it, it follows its own um, sort of method. It's quite good, but I find that uh, it's not that stable. So I actually moved on to a hardware controller. Uh, another uh, uh, fr free uh, software controller is Champsys Magic Q. It is a, a much more professional model of a software. It also uh, mimics more what a real hardware controller would do. Uh, Chauvet is a, a leader in uh, uh, DMX lighting uh, for fixtures and that. Uh, they also uh, make controllers. This is an example of a small DJ style controller. Um, you can pick these up for 100 bucks and up and that. Um, when I was getting a controller, I didn't know anything about DMX at the time. So what I did is I went with a Behringer Eurolight LC2412. And uh, this is the one we're going to use when we start uh, doing our programs and, and f further uh, um, videos down the line here. The uh, reason I got it, it has the most bells and whistles. For, it was about 200 bucks at the time. Um, it's got a lot of uh, sliders on it, and I figured the more is better. And that. Uh, now, when you get a fixture, one of the very first things you have to do is uh, set a base address. So each fixture has a base address. This is the starting address for its function. So it's going to have a series of functions. Uh, we set using digital displays. Here's an example of a digital display here. A lot of times you'll have the letter D, and then you'll just set a number here. The number can be anywhere from 0 to 512, right? Uh, because there's 512 addresses in the universe, right? Uh, we set using a digital one. Uh, we also have rotary. You know, you put a little screwdriver in here and select what the number is going to be. Uh, you also have uh, dip switches where you'd set uh, a binary number that would indicate um, its starting address. Now, when we have a fixture, this is an example of a three-channel red, green, blue light. Uh, we can set the starting address to 55. I choose 55 arbitrarily. Uh, we'll see later in part three when we start planning our, our uh, universe. Uh, these numbers will come, become more uh, um, important as to what they are. So when you get a fixture, what you end up with is a little table with it. Uh, this is a very simple table. It's got uh, red, green, blue. So they say channel one is will has the function of turning the red LED off and on. And when we set the starting address or base address to 55, the red channel will be at 55. That's our very first channel. That's our base channel. So the controller will send out some DMX information on channel address 55. That will talk to the red channel on this um, fixture. Uh, if it sends the, the uh, value of 0 to it, it will be, the red fixture will be off. If it sends the value of 255 to it, the red fixture will be on as, as bright as it can be. Uh, anything in between will be some lo level of uh, dimming it. 
The green channel will be the next address available at 56. So channel 1 is red, next address available will be green. And again, if we if the uh, controller sends the D, it talks to DMX address 56 and it gives a value of 128, the green channel will be at half brightness. At uh, blue channel will be at address 57. and that, So now we have three different addressing or three different channels, three different addresses that we can control three different channels of this one fixture. Um, let's say uh, in, on our universe we have a seven channel RGBW light, red, green, blue, and white. Uh, seven channels means it has seven different functions. Uh, you'll get a table like this one. Uh, so channel one is a master dimmer. So now we have a master dimmer that controls the red, green, blue, and white LEDs. So we can have one fader that we can actually turn them all off or turn them all on. Then what we have is the following channels, two, three, four, and five are actually controlling each individual LED. So it would be the red LEDs, the green LEDs, the blue LEDs, and the white LEDs. So we're going to set it at base address 58. And the reason we do 58 is because we've used 55, 56, 57 of the three channel. We don't want to have a conflict. So now what we'll do is we'll start at the next sequence of 58. So 58 will be the master dimmer. Uh, the next one will be red dimmer. Uh, 60 will be the green, 61 the blue, and 62 the white. So we have individual controls of the different colors, red, green, blue, white, using channels 59, 60, 61, and 62. And we also have a master dimmer at 58. Uh, what you'll notice is that on the 7 channel, we also have some more functions. We have a, a channel 6, which is our function select. And if we set on channel 6 a value of 40, that will turn it into a strobe flash, right? Uh, so what happens is it could be a, a, a strobe. Uh, channel 7 is the speed of the, of the strobe. So we have some extra functions. Uh, again, if we go back to channel 6, we can have a gradient change. So if we set uh, our function in between 101 and 150, so the controller would say, okay, on channel 6, which would be following... It would be address 63. It would be one more than 62. Uh, and we set it a value of 101. It's going to do gradient change. And what it's going to do is cycle between the uh, uh, red, green, blue, and white colors gradually as a gradient, get brighter and then dim, and the next one would come up. And how fast it cycles would depend on uh, channel 7. Uh, we also have a pulse change, which means it would it'd be quite sudden change. It would just splash between red, green, blue, white. Uh, we also have a voice change. So what happens is a lot of these uh, fixtures have a little microphone built in, and what they can do is detect um, music, right? And what you can do is set it there, and that will change the colors depending on the music. And the color that changes will depend on what you set for your red, green, blue, and white on there. Uh, you can also set these uh, fixtures in master-slave mode. Uh, it must support master-slave mode. The fixture must support it. And um, they should be the same model, right? If you have the same model, you're doing master-slave, it's going to make your life a lot easier. Uh, the first fixture is configured normally, and it's the master. Then what happens, the other fixtures in the chain are set to slave, and they'll follow whatever happens to the master. Uh, some programs like Freestyler really implement this very nicely. Uh, what happens is that you can highlight. Um, let, let me go back up here if I can get back to the Freestyler program because I happen to notice that it has master slave. So what happens here is this one here is the master and these four uh, fixtures behind it are slaves. So all you have to do is change the setting on this one and these four would follow it. right? So this, uh, uh, f f this is the end of uh, part two. And what we're going to do is in part three, we're going to get into the planning stage. So this is where, uh, this is what I find that a lot of the uh, uh, YouTube videos, a lot of the uh, documentation you got on the web skip. They don't talk to you about the planning. So we're going to get into that in part three.